if I got frustrated, I did one month, but just, just effing do it. (laughs) 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 I got so frustrated with like excuses and just, do it. <laughs> got everything there. Let's just do what we're supposed to be doing. That was actually Phil Knight's original slogan for Nike was just can do it. Hey everybody, it's John Lamerton here alongside my good friend and business partner, Mr. Jason Brockman. We are here for another episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast, where as always, it is our job to help you get more customers and make more money without just working harder. So, without further ado, let's dive straight into this month's episode. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 44 of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast. Uh, we've got a great guest on today's show, uh, Mr. John Munt from Shepherd's Walks. Yes, not even uh, Shepherd's Walks, but he does Shepherd's Walks holidays. He also does as a sort of company, and he's also doing something else as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's been uh, one of our one presenters for about a year now. Um, we were chatting before we came on air, and he said that he read big ideas for small businesses on holiday in Lanzarote decided that, Oh my God, there's so many problems within my business. I need to do something about this. And he got his iPhone, made his little 90 day plans and then emailed me and said, John, this is what I'm thinking of doing. He's like, yeah, absolutely mate. You've got, you've got the right track. And he's, you know, in his words, changed his business. And you're going to hear some great stories about that today. So without further ado, here is John Monks from Shepherd's Walks. So hi, John. Good to have you on the, on the podcast. Hi there. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Great to have you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, some Shepherd's Walks and what you do? Ooh, it's always a big one. So I know you should be able to summarize yourself in one sentence, but um, with Shepherd's Walks Limited, and we have four aspects within the business. So Shepherd's Walks does day walks, day activity. We run events and other such things. Within that, we also have a, a sock business, believe it or not. So we, we manufacture and retail mohair socks. We have a walking holiday business, which is Shepherd's Walks Holidays, which just guided walks and walking holidays. Anything that includes an overnight stay is Shepherd's Walks Holidays. And then we also have another aspect, which is GPS training, which is the largest independent retail of outdoor GPS units. And we do nationwide training courses as well, both online and physical courses. So you've got lots going on there, haven't you? Yeah, just trying to have different revenue streams, just kind of keep ourselves going. So there's one part of the business is doing less well, another another part will hopefully be covering that for us ourselves. You've, you've done the, the, the classic thing of diversifying, but diversifying within a very similar sector, haven't you? Yeah, and really, it starts off with Shepherd's Walks first, which was me just on my own doing day walks and day activities. And then I thought, well, what do I do in winter? Because actually, not many people go for a walk in winter. So I bought a sock business because everybody wears thick socks in winter. And that kept me going during the winter. And But then as the business, is, or the business has grown, we're kind of, these other aspects are bolted on. It can, and it's not as seasonal as what it used to be. So you said you, you started yourself just doing the walks. So was yeah. that a passion or a hobby of yours before you started the business? Well, I'm called Shepherd's Walks because I used to be a hill shepherd. So I used to look after sheep for a living. And then I used to spend a lot of time just listening to Radio 5 and all these people making money on the internet. So I thought, actually, why don't I write some walking guides from a shepherd's perspective? My USP was I was a hill shepherd, wrote walking guides and saw them on the internet. And I was still shepherding full time. And then people said, well, why don't you start taking people out walking? So I started taking people out walking. And it caught the... We caught the, I don't know, the nation's, um, I don't know, part really, and end up on Country File, end up on the Telegraph and all the broadsheets. And I kind of became this celebrity shepherd who was um, taking people out walking and writing walking guides and appeared in like the Radio Times as like the website for walking in the northeast of England. And then it just grew and grew on, on the back of that, really. And then again, I then ended up leaving shepherding and doing it full time. And it was hard, you know, for the first 10 years, you know, it was a hard, hard slog. You know, I kind of went full time and I've got a wife and two kids. So I kind of had to pay a rent and on the house and things. Because when you're a shepherd, you have a tied cottage. So when I left the shepherding world, I had to kind of move into the real world. So I had to pay my rent on the cottage because we couldn't afford to buy anything. It was 10 years of hard slog. But then after that, you know, it got easier and easier. I can't think who that was, but there was a quote and then someone said, you know, the, the first decade or two are quite tough. After that, it gets a bit easier. Well, everybody always says it's the first two years. And do you know what's interesting? said the first 10 years, I would go, that's rubbish. It's the first two years. But it was 10 years of robbing Peter to pay Paul, hard, hard graft. And then now I would say, well, we're, we're you know, 19 years in now. It, life's so much easier. Yeah. What challenges did you think, what challenges were you facing during that first 10 years? 
Do you know, it's just having to be everybody, isn't it? Do you know, having to be the, the financial guy, having to work out the accounts, understand the figures, also have to be the marketer, also the person who answers the telephone, and all I can employ was someone part time to kind of help me out, who kind of just did, did, did as I asked them to, really. I think it was just the hard hours. You know, I went like working, I would literally work 16 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, that, that was what I did. You know, I had to take a, another part time job that was paid £550 a month, which was what my rent was. So I kind of had something that had a roof over our house. Um, and it was just, I think it's just those hard and, and just the cash flow. You, know, you don't appreciate you know, the, the gambles you take and, and you can think, if this doesn't work out, you've had it really. Because all the time I've, I've gambled and gambled, but in a, in a controlled manner to kind of grow that business because you don't have that cash behind you, do you? So I'm guessing that we're no longer doing 16 hour days now. No, 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 no. <laughs> I did start at six o'clock this morning, but no, I, I, I now work. No, I'm, I'm in the office eight o'clock and I'm out by you no know, five o'clock, half five or something like that. But again, the world has changed, hasn't it? You know, now we've got you no know, like connectivity. You know, you can go away on holiday and kind of work you no know, half an hour in the morning, and that covers everything that you need to do, really, doesn't it? Yeah. So what what have you changed? What's different now? You know, nineteen years later, that you weren't doing, say nine, 10 years ago. You know, it's now systems and structures and automation. Everything's automated now. Do you know, everything just works itself. So you now you buy a GPS unit off us now, do you know, you get automated emails for the next one year about how do you take up your free training? How do you do this? And that's all, you no know, building those systems, you no, know, you know, emails, get rid of emails, customer management software, you know, just managing that, you know, now you can do it on your phone. You now we have an app on our phone, which manages our emails in the customer management software. So it's that connectivity. And also we've grown, you know, we've grown from, you know, just me to, I've got like, there's five of us in total full time. And there's, there's you no, know, we've got another 12 part-time guides and trainers. So it's just the systems and structures. And, you know, and, and I have to be honest, I can't do everything anymore. Do you know, you kind of, I just laughed upstairs in the office before and like, I can't even use the telephone system. I jumped onto somebody's desk and they couldn't transfer the right bus to the right desk. So you, you become very specialized in what you want. And I'm kind of, and I just do the marketing now with the business and, and the bits I want to do really. So for your, I mean, lots of business have their first big stumbling block or the first big block is, is it hiring that first person? So who, who was that first person for you? Yeah, it wasn't a situation. What makes you think you need them right there at that time kind of thing? What, what was the timing for it? Well, I, I did it when I was still full-time shepherding. So when I started off, I was writing these walking guides. And what I felt like, I used to put my kids to bed at 7 o'clock, half 7, and I would work on the business from half 7 till you know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock every night. And what I felt was I was just treading water. I was just processing orders. I was just answering the emails. I never moved the business forward. So I brought someone in two days a week who came into my lovely cottage. So I was out in the rain and the sleet and the snow working with the sheep and she he came in and processed the orders twice a week and she did that for me and then as I sat down from the computer I could hopefully move the business forward work on the website work on the marketing and that was my initial step and to be honest up till um about six years ago I just had someone you know seven years ago maybe I just had someone working two days a week you know that 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 same ethos carried on you know, just a, a young lady usually came in processed the orders did that admin side of it and I hopefully moved the business forward but then over the last you know, six seven years you no, know, it has changed as grow massively no people say money makes money sadly that's the case no the bigger you grow you've got money you can invest in people it's less of that risk isn't it really i think as long as you know where to spend that money i think yeah. often you can spend a lot of money and there's a lot of big companies that have you know gone got into a lot of trouble recently spending oh. money yeah, I believe me, I'm the most prudent person you've ever going to meet. Today. <laughs> I still look through the expense claim and question why we why we're stopping here for lunch and this kind of thing. So believe me, still very very prudent in what we do, and I still do all the accounts in, accounts out. You know, the, like I still will pay the bills because I want to know where that money's going. I want to know how much in the bank account because believe me, I, I don't want to wake up. I've, I've had those sleepless nights you know, of, of where the money's going to come from, and I'm not going to go back there ever. No, exactly. I can imagine. <laughs> so what? Yeah, let, let's fast forward now. So from those first come kind of the, the first decade or two of struggle to now, what does an ambitious lifestyle look like for you now? So what is, you know, ignore the business. What does the lifestyle look like for you right now? 
the lifestyle for me, I think, is is planning and putting that in place. And then you don't have to be there to do it, don't you? As long as you can plan and now we can all set up our Facebook posts for next month, we can set up our newsletters for next month, and then you can go on holiday, enjoy your life, enjoy your family, and your business just works for itself, doesn't it? I keep talking about automations. You know, actually I look and you can have our automated system from people when somebody's purchased something from us, you know, it sends like 20 or 30 emails a day, and you sit there going, I, I don't, I'm not, and then these are promoting, you know, your podcasts or your, you know, have you got your newsletter, if not sign up here and it's just all automated. And I think that's, that's the future, isn't it really that the systems and structures in place, you now we've got standard operating procedures about, so if you're not in the office, everybody's processing something the same way. And to be honest, I kind of come, I go away for a week's holiday or something, you come back and, you know, there's not those questions that you used to have because actually the answers are there within the structures and the system that you put in place. Yeah. What does that free you up to do outside of the business? Do you know what? You, I'm, I'm friends with you on Facebook and you joked before you started about, oh, you're always out walking, this kind of thing. I do what I want to do in the business. You know, I kind of sit there and go, do you know what? I've just been to the York Stales for guiding for three days or actually four days. And actually, I could have sent somebody else to do I thought, well, actually, why should I? And what we've started doing is actually... I don't have that business in my life. I kind of, the two merge. So actually, if we were to go on a recce down the Peak District, I say to my wife, why are we going to the Peak District for the weekend? And instead of paying someone, as I did three or four years ago, moaning about how much they spent on their expenses, we go make a weekend of it. And actually, in court, I sandwiches. Yeah, to go down and like, yeah, you know, have a nice meal, stay in a nice hotel, go and do like two or three hours work wrecking the new walk or wrecking where we're going to have a new GPS training course and incorporate that into my life instead of being work one minute. Because I used to be obsessed with like, that's my work and that's my private life. But actually, why can't the two merge? Yeah, exactly. If you can merge those two, what does it say if you, if you love your job, you've never got to work a day in your life? Yeah, we do. We do. We do walking holidays on the Isle of Man. Do you know, I've got relatives on the Isle of Man, and we got invited over to one of, one of my cousin's daughter's eighteenth birthday. He said, "Oh, why we're over there? Why did we meet the guy that does our work over there?" So I met with him for an hour and a half on a Saturday morning. But we were there for three days and incorporate those two things into your life instead of one thing or the other. Yeah, it, it, there's two ways you can look at that. You can look at it and say, "Well, you get to do what you enjoy for your business." Mm-hmm. The other way to look at it is to say that your business pays you to do what you love. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I mean, we've, um, we've just booked a holiday for next year in the Yorkshire Dales. So we're spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds <laughs> on a holiday that is for us recreation. It's, it's outside of business. We have designed the business so that we can have these lovely family holidays. Yeah. But for us, that is the business pays for us to go to the Dales and have a yeah. fantastic time. For you, that is just, it's a busman's holiday, isn't it? It is. And I'm, I'm the same in the Peak District. I'm, we've got a big event this weekend, so I'm working Saturday, but then I'm off Sunday. The following weekend, I'm in the Peak District for you know, two days, leading a GPS training course. And again, I, I, that's not work. It's not work. No, I can't believe I pay someone to do it. Just <laughs> <Do I really? laughs> Going for a walk, it's, it's, it's not hard work. And I, I like that interaction with the customer. So actually, I like to go and see what the, the feedback from the customer, meet them myself. And they get a bit of a shock because... We, we turn over well over a million pounds a year and suddenly the managing director turns up, I'm your guy for the next three days. You go, all right, I wasn't expecting this. And they like, they like that. And they like, yeah. I like eating out with them. I'm a social kind of guy. And I, yeah, that's, that's the way I think that my, that's the way I fit my private life into yeah. the business as well. I think it, it's obviously it's taken you those 19 years, but you've now designed that business around you and you are now almost the star of the business. And You've identified A, what you're really good at, which yeah. is the marketing side of things, and B, what you really enjoy. Yeah. And you've kind of said, well, I'm not going to do anything other than stuff I enjoy and stuff I'm really good at. Yeah. You know, so the admin, the automatic processes, that can go. Someone else can do that. And it's like, we've got, I say, we've got an event this weekend. We have a big challenge walk. There's 200 participants there. I've done all the planning there. What's my job? I'm not giving myself a job. I'm going along on the day and I'm going to go and chat to the customers. And actually, I'm going to, I'll be there if there's problems. Of course, I'm, I, I don't give myself a job. I go along and chat to them. So, oh, I remember you from last time. I just, I just wander around and it's, it's, it's the job. And, you know, if I leave at three, if I leave at four or I leave at seven, it doesn't really matter. I'm just there as, as me, as the ambassador of the business, really. Exactly. There was a, there was a fantastic story I heard um, a couple of months back about the founders of Airbnb who did exactly that. They went out to customers and they went to their founder or their, their, their head investor 
and said, look, we want to be a billion dollar company. We want to have you know millions of customers all around the world. Uh, we want to scale. How do we scale? And he said, well, you need to talk to your customers. You need to find out what they want. Well, we can't be doing with that because we want to scale. We want to grow this massive business. He said, well, to grow a massive business, you've got to be a small business first. Yeah. He said, so get out there and talk to your customers. So literally these guys said, well, what we'll do then is we'll, we'll just knock up on, on people's doors and say, hi, you've registered with Airbnb. Um, we had to take professional photos for you. And mm-hmm. um, so, cool. Okay, yeah, what's your name? Oh, I'm so-and-so. I recognize that name. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm also the, the founder and chief executive of Airbnb. It's like, whoa, why the hell are you knocking on my door? And that's no different, John, to you yeah. turning up and leading the walk. So what's he doing here? Well, he's here because he's got his finger on the pulse, yeah. finding out what the customers want, what the latest trends are, what issues there are within the business, and he's fixing those big problems. He's not dealing himself with minutia. He's actually looking at the big picture and saying, actually, this is something we keep getting from like Sam Walton and... and um, Ah, oh, who's the other guy? Jeff Bezos is the customer has to come first. Yeah. Because the customer can ultimately sack you. <laughs> yeah, that's dead right. Yeah. No, it is. It's again now, I, I, again now, seeing the customer, meeting the customer, and understanding the business. Because actually, I'm not saying distrust people, but you know, you, you, the people tell you what they want out of the business. And I'm not, not being critical of staff here, but they come back and say, oh, this is what people are saying. I can't have go, they're not saying that you know that you want that because you want to finish early on because you got a four-hour journey on the way home actually the customer wants to be trained till four o'clock on a sunday it's you that wants to finish at three o'clock so you want to get home so going out at all actually the course can finish at three o'clock you don't have to stay there till five o'clock or understanding and then you can have those logical conversations with all your staff because actually even though i'm not the greatest at doing all the jobs i can do all the jobs within the business when somebody comes and says oh this is a problem all right i understand it and actually we've got a member of a staff on holiday this week and i've done this job and i'm so excited I go, why don't we do that anymore we used to put those labels on the top of that and they go oh well we run out well why have we not ordered anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's great to get back in there and go actually why so why why i've answered the telephone call six times this week and told people how to set their gps unit when they go overseas why is it on that piece of paper that we send out with a map card with the overseas mapping on it well i don't know well why 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 is it on there so instead of answering the telephone call five times a week to answer the same question let's put it on the piece of paper and then that saves five phone calls which is going to save us you no know, 50 pound a week or whatever it's going to save us and i enjoy that kind of like it's problem solving. That's all business is problem solving, isn't it? Really, it is. and it's it's the other thing. If you want to build a million dollar company, solve problems for a million people. It's exactly what solve it is. Many problems, isn't it? You know, it's. I always say I'm, I'm the conductor of the orchestra. Do you know, that's what I am. I class myself. So actually, I don't get. I get very little work done for myself. I come in and people bombard me with their problems or the questions or the queries. Now I know hear a telephone call. I can hear someone like. And I go, that sounds really exciting. I get my, off to my staff, I can make it into a problem. Give that customer to me. <laughs> and then you're the wackiest person ever. Go, I'll do that. Yeah. And then the other day, it was fantastic. I heard this telephone call and I heard it in the office. And this woman go, okay, you're doing this. And this lady was walking around or, or traveling around Britain on her way to Iona to get married. She knitted her own wedding dress and just going around the country to all the places that meant something to her in the country. My, my staff went, what's this woman about? She wants to walk the pilgrim route over to Holy Island. And I said, no, give it to me. And then she said, oh, and there were all these problems there. So no, I'll pick you up at 5.30 in the morning. I'll pick you up. We'll carry you and your wedding dress. We'll walk across the pilgrim's route over the sands. We'll have a breakfast. We'll get back. We'll be on the train. To, you'll be back on the train to Carlisle at you know, 12 o'clock at lunchtime. And she was the most wonderful individual you ever meet. She actually won these wind, Windrush, a generation who ended up in this country. And just things like, you know, you kind of, you get back and she, she come from London. She had never walked in the countryside before. And like taking her feet off to walk across the sands with a, with the water between her toes. She was like totally taken back. She was literally squealing because she didn't like the, the potential of there's going to be snails or something on the side. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you, those are the things that, you know, they say make it for memories. No, those are the, the, the what look like, oh, this is going to be a crazy job. This is like, actually give that crazy job to me because actually I really like the crazy ones. They, they make for memories, don't they really? Yeah. Yeah. So someone else would say that's a nightmare job, but someone else's nightmare is your dream, isn't it? It is. And again, I'm a bit like you, you know, we, people always chase you up all the time for things. And I've just sent an email before and I kind of joked in the office, like that woman's going to fall off her seat because we do all the, 
all the all the um all the walks for Berghaus or their branding and like first time ever she's had a, a risk assessment and a route map no two weeks before you actually do a walk no <laughs> she's texting me the day before where's all this paperwork so uh no you, it's good it's good I, I love working with people I love working with organizations I'm, I'm dead organized I'm I'm really motivated as you quite well know kind of if I set my targets I'm going to hit my targets and I enjoy the building and, and looking back I look back a lot of what we used to do um, and how we've achieved those no kind of what we used to do and looking back at those hard times and thinking about how we we got through those hard times as well yeah quite often you look back on those tough times with oh, i say nostalgia but there's a fond, fond admiration yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, ah, that was a, that was a form of me i managed yeah. to do that yeah. it's survivor's yeah. bias i think isn't it mm. <laughs> it is but you look back you know i kind of when you when you backs up against the wall you know we're producing a brochure or something we're busy and like you're sitting down at your desk at you know eight o'clock at night with a glass of red wine i know you don't drink a glass of red wine or something so you know, i look back at you no know, you get in the zone don't you you play a bit of music and you're proofreading that and i look back at those those are really you know good times you know we got our company accounts just two weeks ago and you know, like they had to be in two days later which is our usual way of everything at the last minute and I sat down when I got home. Um, I've been doing a webinar that night, got home at nine o'clock, and I enjoyed reading the company accounts from nine to 11 o'clock at night. And actually, when the accounts rang up at nine o'clock in the morning, I had a highlight, a pen, I highlighted everything I wanted to discuss with them. My poor wife was going, when do you have time to do this? I, said, I want to know why that figure is that. You know, I'm not having just her telling me why that is. Yeah. And the accountant gave me to me at 4.30 at night. By 9 o'clock the next morning, I was there with my 20 questions about what I perceived that she'd done wrong, which actually she hadn't done wrong. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so I enjoy that side of things. And, and I, don't, I don't class that as work, really. So, John, you've been uh, you've been a member of the One Percent Club for just over a year now, I think. Um, how has that kind of helped you grow the business? It has. You know, I know you talk a lot about surrounding yourself with the right people. That's how I look at the One Percent Club for me. So, actually, surrounding myself with the right people is something I've done actually since reading your book. Because actually, I didn't surround myself with those, but actually, the One Percent Club and also with podcasts and eBooks and this kind of thing, I class that as you know my my group. I think I don't really know you personally. But, you know, that it's, I'm listening to the right words rather than listening to rubbish, as I sometimes used to in the past, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I was guilty of that. I used to listen to sort of any of music or, you know, listen to the radio in the car. And it's just, you put rubbish in, you get rubbish out. You know, and the minute you start listening to just quality people, so you surround yourself with the right people, but it doesn't need to be people that you know. Yeah. You know, even if you're stuck in a completely dead on job now and your mates are all losers and your family don't support you you can still listen to audiobooks you can still listen to podcasts you can still watch youtube you can still read books and surround yourself with positive like-minded people there are people out there there are facebook groups um just search ambitious lifestyle business on facebook you'll find a load of them there's over a thousand of us in there now I find that for me, that's the most fundamental thing for me is actually, you know, you do get beat up. You sometimes feel totally dejected and you know, people close to you will criticize what you're doing. You kind of go, mm, how dare you? But then I just put my earbuds into a dog for a walk or I've got a long drive. I listen to you know, my favorite podcast. It can be business related, it can be non-business and then come out a completely different person because actually I'm, I'm listening to the words of people who are successful, you no know, eBooks, you no, know, so, you know, we, we read some within the 1% club and so i go back to certain times when i'm feeling beaten up about something i, I, I go i'm going to go back to listen to that book and actually that will re-motivate me to kind of actually life's not that bad is it you know let's listen to um you know phil knight's shoe dogs you know what i mean you know if you feel beaten up about the financial issues just listen to that book and you you're, you're the you're the you're an angel aren't you <laughs> because actually because <laughs> because you've entered your overdraft well, i listen to shoe dog when all the bounce when he checks it, when he bounces the checks at the factory, when he's, he's moved all the money to pay off his Japanese finance banker or whatever it was, you, know, you, you listen to that, you kind of come back and oh, we're we're fantastic, aren't we? What we do is is epic. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I, um, for those listeners who don't know, so Phil Knight, founder of Nike, Nike with an E, that is Jason, not Nike. <laughs> my, my <laughs> we always have this conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's the same line as well, I think, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a fantastic autobiography about for me perseverance and succeeding against all the odds because you know phil knight was a beach bum who just happened to travel to japan and discover sneakers and thought you know what there's a business here and 
there were just barrier upon barrier put in his way. He assembled a team of people who didn't really know what they were doing. And it was just, there's so many things that he got wrong from a business then, point of view. When you listen, I know you can't see this, but you're like every night he sat in his recliner and wrote on his legal pad, didn't he? Yeah. I don't remember this. I know you can't see this unless you're watching it, but guess what I have now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've only got a white one, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, yellow legal pad and uh, so, because that is you know, like that's what he did and therefore that's I, I think of the stress I look at that and think of what he went through and actually when I'm moaning about something that's so irrelevant I look in the gas he compared to Phil Knight that's nothing and my legal pad remind me of, of Phil Knight is it, that's that's what I try and incorporate. What I've learned from other people, whether it's Elon Musk or all these people, and you read the books. You no, know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've just read his book. You, know, you pick so much up, even though they're not well. They are business people, not always business people. You pick a lot, lot up from these people, don't you? Yeah. What's your? You mentioned you have some books that you go back to when you need to. What are your go-to books for that? Do you know, like E Myth Revisited, you know, that's my first ever business book I read. I've listened to that a, a number of times. Shoe Dog, I've listened to four times now. I just, I, I love it a bit. I just love the last chapters, you know, when what they're doing now, do you know, you, I, it brings tears to my eyes, actually. I think it's a, it's a um, they ask you answers, you know, made a big part of our business. Um, you know, I, I, I listen to that. Um, I've listened to that a, a number of times. Grant Cardone, I kind of listen to, but it just drives me slowly mad sometimes. But I kind of, I, I we, always love, we love and hate Grant Cardone. So oh, yeah. you've got to be in the right mood. If you're not, if you're feeling a bit beat up, don't listen to Grant Cardone. I don't know. I, I love him, but I hate him at the same time. <laughs> he, he will give you that. He raises bit. your chin again, doesn't he? <laughs> by kicking you up. By, by kicking you up. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I also listen I go back on podcasts you No, know, I sometimes listen to a podcast but then fall out of love out with it for a while then I kind of I've got a long car journey and just autoplay I listen to four or five episodes of, of whatever the podcast is but I think sometimes you know, with podcasts people completely go off you No, know, they kind of have a success and then they completely go off and off on a complete tangent and ruin it really do you know daily podcasts who the hell does daily podcasts over the language place you know, it's far too much hard right? we started with weekly and ended up as monthly so you know <laughs> yeah well, I learned from you can we do a podcast I went, I went straight into monthly because I saw you guys after a week after a week <laughs> that looks hard work to me and when you're thinking about podcasts I'm a massive fan of podcasts I think as well you know people do it too regular when we go to these daily podcasts I think it's just too much isn't it you know weekly or monthly i'd rather do something well and do it less often um, but then there's also the, on the other side of things I, I know i've heard you talk a lot about this so you know, sometimes it's never going to be perfect you just can just work at it and make it the best of your ability you know you know these people who you know mull over their newsletters and do it once a month because it takes them a week to do it you know i do like four newsletters a week and bombard people and when they complain after you give me too many newsletters i think oh, that's the right amount isn't it unsubscribe right. we don't want it you're talking about email newsletters yeah rather than printed yeah yeah yeah, I was gonna say, if you're sending me four printed newsletters a week, that is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so every day I open the letterbox. So it's John again. <laughs> Yeah, well, for Black, uh, Black Friday, I think we did six newsletters in a day for Black Friday. So yeah. I think that, that that drove the sales. And if people don't subscribe, well, they've had nice nice stories the last year. You know, let's have some money wise Black Friday. That's good. So Black Friday was something that went really, really well for you, wasn't it? It was. No, I just, we just read that book. You no, know, they ask you answers, the Marcus Sheridan book and where he's talking about doing videos. I kind of thought, how can we incorporate those videos? So instead of just doing our Black Fridays, we did videos of our Black Friday offers. And then, we, so we edited those into a, a page. So we said, well, this, this offer is going to be released at nine o'clock, this one at 11 o'clock, this one at two o'clock, this so set up all our newsletters beforehand, set up all our social network beforehand. In our, in our office, we have a big plasma screen on the, on the wall, which has our live website stats. And when you look, you can see when people are progressing through checkouts and this kind of thing. And in context, you know, last Black Friday, or the year before, we'd done six, 7,000 pounds for the business. I thought, well, that's very good. And I'm pleased with that. I've thinking maybe get 10 but with this with the the, the videos and the the newsletters all set up it we did 14 grand in the day it was it was absolutely phenomenal and and to be honest because i'd set everything up beforehand i kind of sat there like a lemon and i just had my little spreadsheet with when all my posts were happening but it was all automated and my son's at college over um over in penrith he's studying agriculture and he's just away during the week and comes back 
And by about four o'clock, I went, I said to my wife who works for the business, I said, there's no point in me being here. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I said, I'm going to pick Harry up from the station. So I, I jumped in the car and went and picked up the station at Hexham, which is, it's an hour away. It's an hour there, an hour back. And we just, I just stocked up fish and chips on the way home and just kind of, and picked my wife up when we came back into the village and the staff were all still at work. So I left them at work because they were working until seven. And we just came home and, and I just kind of, yeah, it was, it was brilliant because the year before, I'd worked till no eight nine o'clock at night because they all went home at five o'clock. I was the one working, making the extra money. So I thought I'm not doing this. So I got them to work late. I finished early, and well, it was fantastic. It was a really it was the pinnacle of when all these things come together. Yeah, and you have that nervous don't you at the start of a of something like this. You sit there going, is this going to work or is this not going to work? Yeah, you, you've only got that one day, haven't you? If, if you mess it up, there isn't a Black Friday tomorrow you can do. It's, it's gone. It is. It is. And it's something we rolled out. We're actually doing it actually starting on Monday, Super September, Super September. So it's exactly the same principle of there. Now, I may add, we don't discount anything. We add value to it. And actually, I don't pay for it. I go to Garmin and say, how can you increase my sales? Yeah. And, and, the guy, and the guy who's doing the graphics for our newsletters is from Garmin. I said, if you want me to sell your stuff, do my graphics for my newsletters and my Facebook ads. And he does it all for me. Really? <laughs> so, when you, so I just go back to Black Friday for a second. Uh, just a takeaway for the listeners here, because you, the company was more than twice as busy as yeah. Black Friday. You yourself were less than half as busy. Yeah. And you were able to literally bugger off at four o'clock going, well, it's absolutely pointless me being here. And then I'd imagine you had the best tasting ever fish and chips where you're like, well, We've we've already made on what you made by that time 10, 11, 12 grand. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I, all I did on the phone was speak to the rep at Garmin to say, "Have you got any more stock there? You can post out to me today. Have you got any more stock there today?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and I just I worked through all the problems. You know, it was it was great. And he, and that, he originally said, "Oh, well, you need all these stock for Black Friday." I said, "Well, I'm unsure." I said, "I'll tell you what. I'll take the extra stock if you knock my terms up by like thirty days." <laughs> he went. All right, okay, John. So he gave me an extra 30 day terms on my stock and I ordered more stock. And then on the day, I just rang him up and just cleared all their shelves off. And then it arrived. And we ended up just like on Monday, we ended up shipping the stuff out because we didn't have, we ran out of stock on the Friday. It was just a good day. It was a fantastic day. It was just all, all went to clockwork, really. Cool. So I'd like to just, if I may, just to, to gain there was the fact that you didn't discount. I mean, Black Friday, you renowned across the interwebs for you know cutting the lowest percentages off the prices, and actually you can buy everything dirt cheap, thinking Amazon here and there, kind of like the super sale and the things that they do on their Black Friday and Cyber Monday and stuff. But you didn't do any of that discounting, did you? No, and it's something that I've, I've learned from other people. Actually, he won't mind me saying this. My brother-in-law had his own business. It was a dog food business, and he got so obsessed with price. He was a great individual. He got so obsessed. I'm going to be the cheapest. I'm going to be the cheapest. I'm going to be the cheapest. I said, "Stop! Why are you doing this?" He said, "No, no, no. This because I'm now the cheapest online." He sold dog food where he used to make you know, like twenty quid on a bag or twelve quid or something, and he was he was down where he was making two quid on a bag of dog food. And like I'm going, why don't you increase your price by two pounds, double your margin, do half the work? I oh, know, no, no, that won't work. That won't work. And do you know what? He went bankrupt. He went bankrupt on the back of that. And I sit there going, no, he's eating to my margin. I'm not going to be twice as busy and make the same amount of money. Why am I going to do that? Add value onto what you do. And for me, that, that works. So we, our, our tagline with our GPS units, we don't just sell a, a box with a GPS unit. If you want to go to go outdoors for that, instead, we'll set the unit up for you. You get free two, two free webinars. You get free access to our online training. You get uh, telephone support for one year. And actually, after that, you pay £130. So you give a value. It's a £130 training package, which you get free when you buy from us. And then when people ring up and say, oh, I can get it you know, 10 quid cheaper on Amazon. I said, go and get it from Amazon and then come pay me 130 quid to teach you how to use it. They go, oh, I'll take it from you anyway. So we we sell at recommended retail price. We don't we don't discount at all. There's there's no point. You just kill yourself, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really good to see the, the added value in there as opposed to discounting because so many people just automatically go, oh, I'll just knock the price down because that's that's the easiest route to get people to take action is just to knock the price down. But unless you can compete with the likes of Amazon, the likes of Walmart, and the likes of the big supermarkets, you're never going to actually win that that customer. Um, and, you know, Amazon can, can be the lowest prices and that is part of their main ethos is being really, really low on prices because of the volume they sell. Yeah. You know, your, your friend selling, your brother selling dog food, 
would have survived brilliantly if he was selling 100,000 bags a day. Well, the worst thing is, my brother-in-law actually, but it doesn't matter. But, but what he did, his business was before, he had a branded van. He went around, he lives in a city, so he lives in quite a way. He went around a city, not a city, with the branded van, you know, petted the dog when he dropped off the dog food and he bought a little ball to go with it. And then he got totally obsessed with price. He sat in a warehouse somewhere and sold online, thinking he was a dot-com millionaire, made nothing and went bankrupt. So his business model was, his USP was, he turned up in his red van, he petted the dog, sold them an extra ball or sold them something did 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 wanted they all knew his name it was fantastic and he went into this business model which which was price 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 and i sit there you come and visit us over we can say well, what are you doing what are you doing and i said well he was turning over you no know, far more money than we were ever turning over but he made nothing at it and when he lost a bag of dog food he then had to sell another eight bags of dog food to cover the one he'd lost. Break even, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a focus on margin. Not I mean, enough people look at the margin within their businesses. Yeah, I'd rather say no to a customer. They say I can get it cheaper elsewhere. I go and get it elsewhere. Do you don't want my business? Of course, I want your business. But we are going to offer you this. Yeah. Uh, and not all your customers, your customers. No, there are all those people who are going to scratch around. But then I find it really because then they'll ring us up later and say, oh, I spoke to you, really helpful. Um, I've been and bought this elsewhere. Can you help me out? Yeah, not a problem. Okay, this is my problem. All right, okay. Our bronze package is £60 a year. Oh, oh, I'm going to have to pay for your help. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to pay for my help? <laughs> we, we do that. You know, we, we have support packages that our non-customers will buy from us. Yeah. Yeah, it's that key, key thing for me is, um, yes, I, I want your business, yeah. but not at any price. No, and certainly not for free. <laughs> no, that's it. I'm not going to pay you for my pay for your business. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which is what happened with the dog. And that's a small business. That's all we. That's what we can offer, isn't it? We can offer something different that Walmart or whoever our, our competitors are are not offering. Something that we use the products. You no, know, we we can tell teach you how to use the products. We know what you can get in the box. It's back down to Grant Cardone. You can buy the car from me. You can buy it down the road, but it's uh, you can buy it for cheaper down there. But you're not going to get it with me selling it to you and that kind of thing, isn't it? That same that same sort of principle there, which um, yeah, which is good because actually all that added value, all of that personality and, and company personality is uh, is what's going to, to sell you more units, really. It is. It's all about adding value. You know what your USP is. No, we have a we have a big whiteboard in the office. No, we we have come up to Christmas. I write across the top. We have the products. We have the knowledge. We have the skill. Why don't we sell it? No, give the staff the confidence. I actually put my taglines across the top, and I had one where if I got frustrated, I did one month put just just effing do it. <laughs> I got so frustrated with like excuses of just do it you know, <laughs> everything there let's just do what we're supposed to be doing that was actually phil knight's original slogan for nike was just can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I, 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 we look at figures no we have the figures there no we analyze what's happening and then if it's not working i think you know when your back's the wall you'll work harder to do it. and you have those pages but i think sometimes you do get a little bit too relax you no know, oh everything's going great no we don't need to do that we don't need to do the newsletters but and actually when you go through that harder period i think it it makes you, you know reassess what you need to do how am i going to increase my sales and you know like, actually i keep talking about other people you know i rep at garmin i, I keep talking about turning a personal friend i remember once i said to him a sales job I said what are you going to do to increase my sales he says I don't know. I said, well, get back to me by this afternoon and tell me to. And he rang me up in the afternoon. He said, John, I said, I've got an idea. I went, okay, I'm open to ideas. He said, why don't you do a like and share on Facebook? I said, yeah, okay. I'll give you a free Garmin GPS unit worth 300 quid to do it with. I said, okay, nothing to lose. So he gave me the unit. We did the like and share where it was acceptable on Facebook. So actually sometimes go to the people that we give this guy half a million pounds a year. What are you going to do to carry on getting half a million pounds a year off us? We pay our bills on time. We look after you and ask those people that are making their living from where his largest account. So actually he should help me. If I ring him now, I want him to answer the telephone and ask those people what, and then these are, these are clever people. You know, these are, I'm, I'm, I left school with four O levels. I'm, I'm not clever at all. These people are far more academic and can work through those problems better than what I can. I like that. I like that. I mean, that's um, similar to Neville Wright, isn't it? He was uh, working very closely with the suppliers saying, like, actually, I want to make you guys look good. I want you to be the top rep in your company. So what can you do? What can I do to make you the best salesman in your company and make you look good in front of your boss? 
which in turn is going to involve me selling a lot of your, your company's products. How can I do that? <laughs> Well, it's funny because we go to a big uh, geocaching, you know, geocaching is a treasure hunt with GPS yeah. units. We go to a big geocaching event and, and, and we've been there for years. And I said like this year, well, the last couple of years, I said, the, the guy I work with, the guy says, do you know what? Why am I going there selling your kit uh, and paying my stuff? You come along as well. He said, what do you mean? He said, come along. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I said, come along with your Garmin's Gibo, with your stands and everything. So I said, I, go, I went along to Garmin, loaded up in the back of our van, went along and, and made him work next to me. So when all the people come and say, I've got this Garmin unit, it's doing such and thing, go and see the guy from Garmin there. He'll sort out your problems. I'm here to sell you the new unit. <laughs> <laughs> all the rubbish his way. And he said, oh, well, I said, your products, you sort them out. I'm here to sell it. So I took, I took all that away from him and it's, it's a good friend you know he's turned into a good friend now and um you know and, and you know, we, we would you know, we stay in the same hotel the night before and this kind of thing and, and you know don't be scared of asking those people for that help because again that you're i'm helping pay his way i suspect i pay his wage on, on my entirety i suspect exactly. I, you know don't be scared of asking for that help and admitting that you you can do with a bit of help with you no know, whether it's you guys with this one percent club or whatever you no know, you don't know everything, do you? You know, you have to keep asking for that help. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't actually don't get it. And the same goes for help. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what I've learned over the years. And, and again, you never stop learning, you know, keep writing. No, I mean, I'm, a sister, I'm a bit like, you know, I'm out walking the dog and suddenly you have that 10 minutes of all those ideas coming to your head, don't you? And you've done nothing yeah. for a month. You kind of think, I'm going stale, nothing's happening. And then in those 10 minutes, you suddenly start scribbling down all these things on your on your phone and suddenly you've got your business plan for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah magic magically delivered to you yeah. walking the dog. It, it's a magic time i'd say for me it's it's saunas it's walking the dog and it's just randomly sitting in a chair that's probably why phil knight did it it's just sitting doing nothing switching off all of a sudden your brain i think your brain processes things whilst you're relaxing and then suddenly pops up with oh i've got the answer to that problem you had you had the problem like three weeks ago why have you come up with the answer now <laughs> Yeah. And I think sometimes it takes you 24 hours to switch off from that day to day, doesn't it? Or 24 hours, it takes you to switch off. And then suddenly your brain kind of, it's a different point. You suddenly start thinking creatively. And and I've got, I, I wish I could like work out when that is. You no, know, I, I walk to work. You no, know, sometimes I've got 50 minutes to walk to work and I get back and I grab my legal pad. I write down 10 things I've thought of. But for the last two weeks, I've thought of nothing. So it's, um, I think that's, it's to keep the thing going, isn't it really? Absolutely, mm-hmm. definitely. Cool. So um, we're almost out on time there, John. But how can people get in touch with you if they need to? Oh, there you are. Um, we've got um, just look for Shepherd's Walks on Facebook. If you want to look for me on Facebook and on Twitter, um, we've got a number of websites you can imagine. So our daywalk shepherdswalks.co.uk, holiday shepherdswalks holidays.co.uk, our socks capricorn socks.co.uk, and our GPS training GPS training.co.uk. Um, I wish I could say I keep being told off for not doing much on LinkedIn. I think that's what I keep being told off for doing. But um, one day you'll maybe find me on LinkedIn. But um, I'm quite active on Facebook and do loads of live Facebook. On, on Shepherd's Walks um, I do I know you're friends with me but my um, my personal Facebook page is kind of my personal Facebook page but um, but my business ones you're more than welcome to interact with me and obviously you're in the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Facebook group anyway so people can find you in there and have a chat with you yeah I'm kind of I am a sadly I'm, as you must say I do sit back I do look at it most days I, I don't participate as much as I should do I do have little um, times where I kind of flurry in but um, I, yeah I kind of I enjoy seeing what other people are writing and I do it try and help a little bit and 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 interact but i, I sadly um I, I don't interact as much as i know as much as i should do hey that's not a problem i think everyone's guilty of lurking at times aren't they yeah. um, obviously we'll tag you in the in the post when we when we put this episode up so we, people will be able to get in contact with you there anyway they'll be able to see you and ask any questions they might have about you um, you're also a podcast aren't you you haven't mentioned that yeah sorry yeah we have a gps training podcast that's a year old next well uh, just, yeah a year old in september so we started podcast um and and we do a monthly podcast which has done really really well actually it's uh, i was just out walking just three or four weeks ago just locally we're doing some videos actually with the students and this guy comes to me, are you John? I said, yes, I listen to your podcast. I went, all right. He said, it's a bit repetitive though. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> 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 I thought I went from there to there, didn't I? <laughs> it did make me think. I came back and thought, all right, there's some honest feedback, isn't it? So, 
John, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you ever so much for joining us on this episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle <laughs> Business Podcast, our first one of the uh, the new format. And it's really good that you could uh, take the time to share some of your business insights and what you've learned on your nearly 20-year journey. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed being on. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks. Cheers. Take Bye-bye. Care. Bye-bye. So there you go. And that was John Monks from Shepherd's Walks. That was a great conversation, wasn't it? It was brilliant. He had so much insight from the last 19 years of business, which he could share with us and some of the lessons that he's learned along the way and the struggles and things. It's yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. It's really too interesting to see that he's kind of struggled for quite a long time with his business and obviously thought that, you know, that is the only way. Whereas now he's, he's just become a, such a switched on marketer and brand ambassador for his company. He's now that... He only does what he wants to do. I think that was one of my key takeaways was actually if it isn't something he's really good at or isn't something he enjoys, he doesn't do it. Everything else gets completely automated. That was my key takeaway was that putting those systems, that process is getting to the automation done for everything from when the customer kind of comes in and and that's all dealt with. He can walk away knowing that customer's being dealt with in a a way. The operating manual's there for everybody. Um, You the you know, from the point of order, there's a follow-up sequence of emails and to follow up and everything is, is already done and it's all automated. So he can walk away and enjoy the stuff that he enjoys the most. Yeah. And he's a prolific doer as well. I think we were chatting again off, off air and he said uh, that, you know, but he gets in the office eight in the morning and by 20 past eight, he sent out his first email of the day um, selling something. He'll probably do three a day or three a week. Um, on Black Friday, he did seven in one day. And it's, it, he is a prolific doer. You know, he doesn't sit on his hands, does he? No, no, definitely not. And one of the other key takeaways for me really was margins and the, and the discussion about actually adding the value and not cutting your price and uh, actually working uh, twice as hard for half the amount of money is, is a, ridic- a ridiculous place to be. You might as well just take half the customers, work half as busy, but actually taking a good margin so you can continue to service those in a good way and keep your lifestyle that you kind of want as well. Really good uh, thing. Never get into that race to the bottom because you're only going to end up in one place and that's out the street in a box. Absolutely. Pretty much. Um, the only place you should end up is in the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Facebook group. Uh, we're going to tag uh, John in the post. So obviously we'll upload this episode. You can watch the video of the podcast if you're listening to the audio only version. It's in the Facebook group, bigidea.co.uk forward slash Facebook, or you can just search Facebook for Ambitious Lifestyle Business. Uh, this is Ambitious Lifestyle Business episode number 44. You can search for show notes on uh, Google, on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever. Just use the hashtag ALB44. Brilliant. And for that, it comes to the end of this episode. We will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. So there we are, another episode in the can. Um, How was it for you? Please let us know. um, How do you listen to these podcasts? Um, Please leave a review on that platform. Let us know what we can do better, what you like, what you don't like, and how we can improve to make this show even better for you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.